Hello and welcome. Could a Twitter revolution work in an African country? In the case of Gabon, which stretches from the western coast to Central Africa, citizen activists are not just tweeting their political concerns, they're also using YouTube, Facebook and a new African website called Ushahidi to make their voices heard in the country's upcoming presidential race. The election was called to fill the vacancy created by the death of the Gabonese president Omar Bembongo this June. He was Africa's longest serving ruler, holding power for 41 years, winning elections with 99% of the vote in a single party system. Landa Benbongo Gabon had never uh, had a coup or a civil war, and the country's oil supplies kept the economy fairly stable. After riots and strikes in 1990 forced constitutional changes in a multi party system, critics said that President Bongo maintained his power by keeping a tight grip on the media and co opting his opponents. Now his son, the former defense minister Ali bin Bongo, is widely favored to win this weekend's presidential election in what many are saying is an unfair contest. On today's show, we look at Gabon's upcoming presidential election and ask, can Gabon's tech-savvy activists turn their online efforts into action on the ground, and will they have any lasting impact beyond Sunday's election? Remember, you can join our conversation with your questions and comments. Log on to livestation.com forward slash AJE, enter the chat room and take part, and we also welcome your phone calls on the show. Now, before we get to our guests in the studios, I want to go to the capital of Gabon, Libreville. And joining me there on the phone is Alice Backer, a blogger and activist with the Ushahidi website, which was developed to map reports of violence in Kenya after the post-election fallout in 2008. In Swahili, Ushahidi means testimony. Ms. Backer, thank you very much for joining us. I, I would like uh, to start off by asking you to tell us about uh, Ushahidi, um, which, as we just explained, is an information-sharing platform. What role is it playing in, in Gabon's election? Uh, well, we're going to use it in the very same way that it was used in Kenya, um, and that is to, uh, you know, in the event, because it is such a highly contested election, because there's so much um, uh, protesting going on of... Uh, of what people fear is going to be an electoral coup, we're going to use it to monitor uh, post-election happenings. And uh, and I'm I'm cringing at using the word violence. We don't want that to happen. But in case uh, the result is not, um, you know, is not fair, I, you know, we, we we want to be able to use it to have people send SMS messages um, to the various uh, Ushahidi numbers and uh, report whatever uh, anomalies they are noticing in their area. What, expect, what are your expectations for this election? What do you expect the outcome to be? Is it going to be free and fair? Um, that would be uh, highly unlikely, um, given that there's been several violations of the Electoral Code, given that, um, you know, and beyond the violations of the Electoral Code, just from a commonsensical point of view, uh, there just wasn't enough time for people to register. I think, it, you know, since this was the first time that people could tell that there, there was a chance this wasn't going to be one of those 99% win elections in a one-party system, uh, people really actually, you know, excitedly lined up to go uh, register and vote. And uh, unfortunately, they only had 10 days to do so. And when on the 10th day, people were, um, you know, showing signs of um, unrest and of, um, uh, of, of, of not being happy with uh, such little time, the, election, the, uh, the, the voter registration was extended one other day. But lots of experts um, and critics think that it should have been you know, extended at least another week. Um, so that's one problem. Uh, there have been problems in the ways, there have been violations of the electoral code in the ways that, uh, uh, you know, with, just with, with some technicalities, but also with, um, with uh, revising the voter rolls. Because once they were published, Many people found that many people who had registered found that they, their names were not on the list. Right. So um, there, there's just a lot of uh, anxiety going in, and um, some candidates and, and critics have called uh, the upcoming August, August 30th um, election uh, a, a potential electoral coup. Okay, well, Alice Back, we're going to keep uh, an eye on it, of course, and, and thank you very much for joining us and updating us on the work of Oshahidi there as well. Thank you. Joining me now to discuss the Gabonese elections from Paris is supermodel Gloria Mika, the face of L'Oreal, who was raised in Gabon until the age of 16. She recently founded Guardian Angels for Gabon to help monitor the upcoming presidential election. From Atlanta, we have Jean-Claude Nzamba, an activist and entrepreneur. He was a member of the ruling Gabonese Democratic Party for five years before resigning in protest at the way the party selected its presidential nominee.
And here in Washington, I'm joined by Francois Goahinga, a Gabonese media consultant. Until 2007, he served as associate editor for AllAfrica.com. I welcome you all to the show. And, and actually, Jean-Claude uh, Nzamba, if I could start with you and, and ask you about that. You resigned from the, the PDG, the, the Gabonese Democratic Party, because of the fact that they chose uh, um, Ali, bon, uh, Ali Bongo uh, as the son of the late president as the, uh, as the candidate. What do you see as the problem with that? Well, I did not necessarily resign. Uh, fir first, I'd like to say thank you for having me on the show and um, uh, welcoming everybody else so we could actually discuss uh, these particular elections. That's actually very key for Gabon, but also for the region. Uh, I have now resigned because uh, Ali Bongo was elected a uh, member of that particular party of, that's going to actually be the forefront uh, runner. Pretty much the way it happened is uh, what I was, did not really agree with. We actually, as part of the uh, federation that represents the PDG in the United States, we actually have sent different letters to a uh, member of the headquarter in Libreville to ask for primaries to uh, actually happen so that people at the base who actually associate themselves with that particular party will have a voice and pretty much decide who will be the front runner of that particular party. Uh, some of our letters pretty much have uh, fallen uh, under uh, deaf ears. And uh, also some other things that have happened pretty much uh, allow us to understand that uh, we were pretty much as much forced to accept the consensus that people at the headquarters decided to go mm -hmm. by, which is using 19 people to decide who will be the next uh, for, uh, forefront runner when you have a big base that there and want to actually have a, a, a say. Okay, so that's I'll, pretty much. Yeah, I'll touch on some of those issues. Uh, thank, thank you for that. Let me uh, ask Francois Gohinga, who's uh, here with me in the studio in Washington, D.C. Uh, what, what do you see as the legacy of President uh, Omar Bongo? I mean, more than four decades in power. How do you think that, that has affected the way people view the country's power base and how they might move forward with this election? Well, the legacy of the late president is very mitigated. The president has been credited with uh, keeping Gabon a secure and relatively stable country in a shaky sub-region. But uh, internally, the, the way the dynamics work internally, that's what has been uh, very, very not uh, democratic, I, I should say, which is that the base, as my uh, fellow countryman, Mr. Nzamba, just said, that the base of the, the electorate does not necessarily feel they have a stake at it. They do not necessarily feel they have a voice in that process, and it's been the way for 40 years, 40 mm -hmm. plus years that Mr. Bongo was in power. So, Francois, who's, who's, who, if anyone's going to ensure it's a free and fair vote? I think uh, originally there was a lot of hope around the Constitutional Court, which is the highest court in the country, and the initial indication was that the court was going to be fair and was going to make sure that the rule of law will ultimately be respected but over the past few weeks uh, the, the the way there was a clamp down on pretty much dissent there's been a clamp down uh, the court has been part of this apparatus that has been rushing things up so that the election happens right now with the least amount of preparation with the least amount of openness to make sure that everyone every single candidate every single uh, eligible voter can get to cast a ballot well, let me bring in uh, uh, Gloria Mika here. What a pleasure to have you with us as well. And uh, you, you took a big step. Um, you, you've, you've decided to put yourself out there and, and make sure that uh, something positive happens in your, in your country. Um, I, as, I mean, as an international model, as someone who's, who's got a celebrity status, what made you want to join this, this process and, and, and fight for fair and free elections in Gabon? What, what uh, difference do you hope to make? Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank you for the invitation. Well, this election is uh, historical for Gabonese citizens, so I thought that I had to um, do my duty as a citizen, first of all, and vote for it, and uh, of course take part in uh, this historical uh, tournament for, Gab for Gabon. If anyone asked you why the world, why anyone outside Gabon should be paying attention uh, to what's going on there with the election, what would you say? Why is the election important beyond Gabon? I mean, this, I see this as an opportunity for Gabon to maybe be a role model in terms of democracy, not only for Africa, but for the world. So after these 40 years of um, having the same uh, president, you know, um, this is a big moment for Gabonese citizens. But symbolically, I mean, we're turning a page here. We could start 
anew, you know. Mm -hmm. So I really see this as an opportunity for our authorities in place to change the image that uh, Gabon might have had uh, due to his past with the 40, uh, f with the same president for so long. Right. So I don't know, I just thought that they would see it the same way I do and uh, really take their responsibilities and the choices they make to make sure that uh, everything happened uh, the way it should happen, okay. in a fair way for everyone to participate in this election. Let me get Yannick on the line from Pennsylvania who's joined us. Yannick, thanks. Uh, what's your question or comment? Um, my, my comment is about the way uh, the election is, has been organized. Um, I think there are several reasons why most Gabonese right now are really worried about the fact that the election is poorly organized. Um, if I can give an example, for, for example, here in the United States, um, we, just, uh, we just heard that there's going to be three polls for elections, one in Washington, D.C., another one in New York City, and another one in Los Angeles. But the big question is, why Los Angeles, when we know that most of the Gabonese community uh, live either around D.C., New York, or in the southern part of the United States? Okay. So all these questions and uh, around the way the, the elections are, are part of organized makes the old people worry. And we know right. that the, the, the big key for development in Gabon is really uh, how the elections are being organized. If the people okay. of Gabon Yannick, can pretty... Yannick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get uh, some of these issues you've raised and, and talk more about what's affecting the election process there in Gabon in just a moment. We're going to take a short break here. As we pause, I'm going to remind you, our viewers, you can join the conversation with your questions and comments by logging on to livestation.com and entering the chat room. You can see a debate taking place in there right now. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tuck, 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 tuck.